Jorge Soler, an all-star baby. First time all-star for Jorge Soler. And boy, oh boy, he deserves it. Is he the best free agent, Marlin, in the last 20 years? I think he could be. Also, Jazz Chisholm Jr. is headed to the 10-day IL. Dane Myers getting the call. Turn to get into this is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked on Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England. Welcome to Locked On Marlins. This, of course, is your daily Marlins podcast. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up on Twitter at Miami Marlins underscore UK. That includes you, Braves fans, if indeed you are still listening. Um, thanks for all the engagement over the weekend. It's been a lot of fun. Um, guys, this, of course, is your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen of the day. There is a YouTube channel. I strongly recommend you head over there to hit subscribe there also. And you will enjoy the graphics. You will also see it's a Monday. What does that mean? It normally means the UK go, but no UK go today, unfortunately. Sean Barrett is on an early at work, so he's already snoozing. Apologies. This is dropping late. Late. I had a tennis match that went on. It was a two-setter, but almost two hours of play. So I'm absolutely gasoline at here. Shoulder sore. Tennis elbow playing up. Right knee sore. <laughs> Nearly 40 years of age. I shouldn't be playing tennis anymore. But anyway, I lost. Tiebreaker and 4-6 in the second set. Never mind, never mind. Guys, um, before we get into tons, there's tons to get into here in advance of game one. This, is, this episode is sponsored by Ibotta. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners Five bucks just for trying Ibotta by downloading the free Ibotta app and using the code MLB. All right, guys. So what's on deck for us today? After I recorded an emergency pod yesterday, which was a lot of fun. And thanks for everyone for tuning in. Like the, the, the view account is way up. Probably all Braves fans, to be honest. But anyway, uh, after I recorded that, went to bed, you know, snoozing early, of course, in advance of a busy Monday. The news drops. Hoy Soler has been uh, added to the All-Star roster as one of the <clears throat> the reserves. I think is the best way of describing it. That maybe is the official way of describing it. But Hoy Soler is an All-Star. Spoke about it earlier in the year that he definitely would be in the conversation. It's all about maybe how the fan voting goes, and you know, and but JD Martinez being voted in, Bryce Harper not being voted in. You know, Bryce Harper hasn't played enough this year and when he has it's not been great anyway so you knew Bryce wouldn't get in so by JD Martinez getting that fan vote always had the feeling that Jorge Soler would get the call as the all-star in 2023 and I am stunned that it's the first time he has been an all-star particularly after that royal season that royal season in what year was that 2018 was it I don't know I have to go back and have a look now but either way when he hit like 200 home runs or something. Um, what did he hit that season? 48 home runs in 2019 for the Royals. 117 RBIs that year. Um, not an all-star, though. Not all-star worthy with 48 bombers. Boy, oh, boy, that 2019 AL roster must have been stacked. And who the hell was representing the Royals that year? As the, all as the all-star in 2019? I don't know the answer. I should have looked this up, but it's just come to me. Like, everyone has a representative. Who the hell was the Royals representative? Was Maybe was Zach Granke still there then? Probably. Either way, Soler, the first time All-Star. But Craig Mish called it out on Twitter earlier. I was thinking the same. I was thinking, right, where does Jorge Soler rank in recent free agent acquisitions for the Marlins? Because I was like pondering on this. Like, clearly, the Marlins have had a real bad record in this space the past, I don't know, as long as I can remember, to be honest. Um but I, I mean, I haven't followed the team for that long. But in the in the time I followed the team since 2016 to 2017, I, I couldn't remember anyone that was a free agent acquisition of this kind of magnitude that has delivered this level of production. And fair play to Jorge Soler. He has absolutely delivered this year. The good news is with Lockdown Marlins is that everything is on record. So 
all the takes I have, everything that I actually think is recorded and is there to be listened to back. I remember when the Marlins signed Jorge Soler, I remember looking and thinking, this is a two-year deal. Like, I know it's a three-year potentially with player options in there, but this is going to be a two-year deal because, you know, year two at 15 mil, you know, likely he's going to opt into that, particularly after getting hurt, obviously, um, in, in year one. But with only a 9 million um, number for a player option in year three, the way that things were structured here, Jorge Soler, it would have had to have been a disastrous, disastrous two years for him to opt in to a 9 million third year, particularly the way like baseball contracts are growing and always projected to grow. So always saw it as a two-year deal. I think the Marlins always saw it as a two-year deal. And overall, it's going to be one of the most successful free agent acquisitions the Marlins have ever made, even particularly in the last 20 years. I haven't followed the team long enough to know, but since 20, you know, 2003, when they won it all, has there been anyone better? I'm, I, I don't know. Let me know, guys. You let me know what you think. But in the time I have followed the team, I think Jorge Soler has been the best free agent acquisition. And, uh, you know, we'll see how things go this year. A lot of people asking the question. Well, no, there's a couple of follow-up questions here with Hoy Soler. First one is, now he's been added to the roster, is he going to participate in the derby, in the home run derby? <laughs> and he was asked that, I believe, today. And he, uh, it was a resounding no. The right call for Hoy Soler. He should absolutely not be participating in the home run derby um, for various reasons, one of which being exactly the reason that Jazz Chisholm Jr., has landed on the IL today. There's just no need to be taking hacks that put your body at risk. Like, Jazz has to be having those hacks. He's paid to be out there for the Marlins in that situation, but not for the Derby. And Hoy Soler in a contract year should absolutely not be trying to swing a bat there and see what he can do. It'd be fun. Absolutely, it would be fun. But it's the right call for Hoy Soler. Here's the other call. If it is to be an expiring deal, um, which it will be, he will he will opt out of this. We know it. So with that being said, do the Marlins look to trade an all-star, an all-star impact stick? Do they look to trade Hoy Soler at the deadline? I've heard people asking that question. And guys, we've got to look at the standings here. The Marlins are 11 games over 500. They are in the mix. They've got seven games on deck here at home. They've been great at home going into the All-Star game and break itself. Who's to say they aren't 13, 14 games over 500 again? And then, all you know, you're playing, what, 500 ball out from that point. You know, that's, what's that? That's 95 wins. 95 wins. They're in the postseason, baby. They're probably, they've probably got a home game, a home series in the wild card of that, that part. I know Hoy Soler's contract is expiring and the old Marlins would have absolutely traded him because they weren't in the hunt. They're in the hunt. And if the Marlins decide to trade Jorge Soler at this point, which they never will, by the way, but if they do, I put it on record right now, unless this is the most disastrous July ever, the Marlins go like 0-20 and, and like a 10 games under. If that's the situation, then I'm calling it in. No more hosting of Locked On Marlins. No more following the Marlins because they are not a serious team. But that isn't going to be the case, guys. It won't. It won't. The Marlins will absolutely not be trading Hoy Soler. It is what it is. They've seen full value from the spend. He's, you know, he's had 20-odd million from the Marlins. Just over that, actually. And it's been worth it. He's produced. So you don't just have to flip everyone. I know that's the old mentality. Hoy Soler is a massive part of why this team has been productive. And the interesting bit when you go and look, look at like Hoy Soler's numbers, the first thing that, that sticks out is against lefties, he's hitting over 300 this year. Do you remember the Marlins in the past years haven't been able to hit a lefty for dust? It's been putrid. Those soft tossing lefties would roll in. The Marlins would be no hit through seven. They'd be down four. And, you know, we'd all be switched off and not watching. Hoy Soler's having none of that. He's absolutely blasting lefties, hitting over 300. The Marlins as a team have been miles better against lefties this year. So again, I tip my cap to Kim Ang, I tip my cap to Skip Schumacher, and I tip my cap 
to the guys for delivering because it was a serious, serious Achilles heels of this club. And they've righted it. And there's so many things they've righted this year, which is why this club is good. This team is good. No doubt. Jorge Soler, the other thing that stood out to me, you're on the fan graph splits page, right? What are you looking for? First thing i got to call out is his May was insane. He was absolutely insane in May. And that's where he had that like home run streak that was crazy. This is my favorite bit, though, Jorge Soler. High leverage situations, all right? High leverage situations. 34 plate appearances so far. Five home runs. 13 RBIs and hitting 385 in high leverage situations. Jorge Soler, baby, has been so valuable to this club. He's come up clutch so many times. He is a game-changing stick that really, the Marlins don't have a ton of... There's no other sticks like this in this organization at this point. We'll wait to see what Dane Myers is. I mean, who knows? Dane Myers could be this, you know, high leverage stick. But Jorge Soler has been absolutely phenomenal this season. He truly deserves to be an all-star for the first time. And I would love it if the Marlins could find a way to get something done with Jorge Soler to keep him in Miami for another couple of seasons. It's such a tough ask. And really for Jorge Soler, unless he is desperate to be in Miami, then you would naturally just see what happens in the offseason and see what the market's looking like. But for an all-star DH that pummels lefties, that delivers in high leverage, that boy has got a market, baby. I'm not sure that market's going to be uh, in the Miami price range, which is disappointing. But again, here's the thing. The Marlins got the deal done. It was off the back of being the MVP in the World Series. They got a deal done for Hoy Soler. They structured it in a way that meant it was always going to be a two-year commit unless things went really badly wrong. And they've seen full value from this contract. It's a rare free agent dub, and it should be celebrated. And I'm celebrating it, and I hope Hoy Soler celebrates it as well. Guys, let's tell you again about our good friends over at Ibotta. Yes, sir. And, you know, new ad for those listening. And, you know, I know you guys listening. Um, this is a new ad. So listen up. Listen up. And I know, I know my, I know the listeners. And if you guys are picking up burgers and hot dogs for a summer barbecue, I know you guys are. Joe Brasaro, I know you're listening. Smoking Joe, you'll be picking up tons of these. You know you're already doing it. So why not get cash back with Ibotta? Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items, from produce to personal care, pantry goods, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy, guys. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or a wine trip. Who knows? Or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing. Potentially that one to Miami in September. Maybe. <laughs> that game you're dying to go to or a fancy dinner that you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta. Includes Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. All these US brands. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying Ibotta by using the code MLB when you register. Free money. Is that right? They're offering listeners five bucks just for trying the app. And you've got to use the code MLB when you're registering. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store, download the free Ibotter app, and use code MLB. That's Ibotter as in I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store, and use the code MLB. Stunning. Get that downloaded. Use that code MLB. Five bucks. Start earning back on your shopping. Free wine. Free wine, guys. No brainer. All right. So we've done a whole segment about Hoy Soler. I mean, he was number one on the rundown. Maybe we should just end the pod there. This should just be a Hoy Soler homage. Maybe. Feel like we need to talk about jazz, though. So we will. Talked yesterday, post game reaction that, you know, I, I was concerned. Really, really, really concerned about 
the jazz swing, the reaction, like those oblique injuries, like they're, they, they just require rest. They take weeks, sometimes months. It's not good. Not good. Anyway, the formalities completed. Jazz Chisholm Jr. to the 10-day IL. Not the 60, obviously. Jazz, though, speaking about the injury, said it felt like it's not a serious one. It could be just a couple of days, and he could have been back out there, maybe even avoided the 10-day IL. But with the All-Star break coming up, the decision made, go to the IL. You know, you've got, you know, you've got the all-star break coming up too. Have an extended rest period, come back, ready to rock and roll and deliver for this team. Okay. And I hope that's the case, by the way. The my take on it was this is probably going to be like a month, would be like kind of a best, maybe not best case, but like, you know, you'd be expecting a month out at this point. So almost like by August, Jazz is back. So if Jazz thinks it's something really minor and it's just going to be the seven games he misses, then great. Best case situation. I have to be honest, when I heard him say that, it really reminded me of Trevor Rogers post-game after he got hurt that first time this year, where Trevor was basically saying, well, Skip took me out. I felt like I could have carried on going, actually. I felt like I could keep pitching. I felt okay. We haven't, we haven't seen Trevor since. So with these injuries, particularly obliques, for a guy like, for all hitters, right? Because trying to hit a baseball, you you just, you use that muscle so much. And there's no hiding place for the oblique. Like you're just leaning into that. So I'm, I'm concerned, but I'm optimistic based on Jazz's statement that this could be the minimum time, so to speak. So let's see. Gut feel is though, this is, Gonna linger on for a touch longer. And I just want Jazz to come back healthy. And, you know, I know he's worked his way back with a turf toe, which will kind of still be nagging around anyway because it's that type of injury. In reality, this oblique strain is gonna be kind of the same thing. Like, unless he fully rests, shut down, and get it fully back. And, you know, we don't know the severity yet, but, you know, who you don't want him to come back too soon. Like, you need to protect. Jazz needs to be protected against himself because, like, he wants to be out there. And, I'm going to put it out there now, and I, I said on Twitter earlier, Jazz Chisholm Jr. is the best offensive player for the Marlins. I know Luis Arias is having a MVP caliber season, hitting nigh on 400, and is the best pure hitter that I've ever seen in my life, no doubt. But Jazz Chisholm Jr. is still the most valuable offensive contributor and getting to a point of defensive too. The speed, the base running, the power. The glove, the swag, everything. Jazz, as a complete player, is the best player for the Marlins. So it stings badly when your player has already been out for nigh on six weeks. Then he's back, delivers, offensively delivers in Boston, was out there putting his body on the line in Atlanta, a couple of hits through that series. Then he's back on the IL. It's a bitter blow for the Marlins. And I know we're all kind of like buzzed up about Dane Myers. Rightly so, because Dane Myers and that story is amazing. And we've been clamoring to see Dane Myers, some have anyway, more, more so than others, for some time. The story's amazing. He's producing a AAA and AA this year. We want to see him, but we wanted to see Dane Myers because, you know, we've been pretty underwhelmed by Gene Segura at third base at times. and. You know, I understand that. You're looking to upgrade by removing Gene Segura and adding in Dane Myers. I completely get that. There's no way that Dane Myers is an upgrade at this point. It isn't like Dane Myers is coming onto the roster to replace Garrett Hampson or you know, Gene Segura, as I mentioned, or Avicel Garcia. Dane Myers is having to come up to replace the best player. So this is a downgrade. Downgrade. So... You know, this is a huge stretch for the Marlins after getting absolutely battered in Atlanta. It would have been amazing to have had Jazz in there against the St. Louis Cardinals. Why? Because the Cardinals, year after year with the Cardinals, when we play them, I always come away just scratching my head going, man, the Cardinals are just such a solid team. They lack swag. They lack sex appeal. They're boring as hell. Boring. 
but they are fundamentally sound and they know how to win baseball games. This year, not the same. They aren't fundamentally sound. They're still boring and they can't pitch. And with that being said, that was the thought. Jazz could absolutely light up the Cardinals here with their pitching staff, really get the momentum rolling into a huge potential series with the Phillies coming into Miami before the All-Star break because the Marlins and Phillies, that's the real battle. I know we've looked at the Bravos, but the Bravos are going to win this division at a canter. They're going to be the number one seed in, in the NL at a canter by miles. It's going to be done way too early. That's going to create the own, their own problems for the Bravos. Are they going to foot off the gas, cruise on into the postseason and get mopped up after having a, a week off as well? That is going to be a real interesting test for the Bravos. But where the Marlins are at, the Phillies, Marlins and Phillies are the ones. The, that is the series. And that is, you know, the rest of the way. How can they play against each other? Best news for the Marlins? They got absolutely battered in Atlanta. Guess what happened to the Phillies? They dropped the series to the Nats. There we go. It can happen. Everyone, like, always seems to pummel the Marlins when they sweep the Nats. Hey, it's only the Nats. It's only the A's. Well, how about when the Braves get beat by the A's and the Phillies get beat by the Nats? And you kind of look around and go, hey, we made a few games there then. Happy days. The question is, can the Marlins, with St. Louis in town, can they beat what should be a decent ball club? There's talent there, no doubt. Can they beat this ball club? Can they go 3-1 and one against the Cards? A team they've struggled against for years. Can they do it off the back of an absolute beatdown? And what role is Dane Myers going to play? The lineup's out today. I mean, the game's probably just about to start. Sorry, this is dropping so late. Like I mentioned, big tennis game. But what role is Dane Myers going to play? I, I know, you know, what we've seen with the Marlins calling up these prospects. You know, we've had a Meyer up, Xavier Edwards, now Dane Myers. These guys are coming up and they're getting no, op no opportunities fundamentally. They're just bench guys. Like, Skip is doing this in a way a bit like the Bravos to be honest, because like the Bravos lineup, they put it out early every day. It's the same lineup. It's the same guys. They they kind of cycle left field a touch, you know, maybe the odd platoon, but the Bravos know their lineup. And I think the Marlins know their lineup this year. And the, the guys that are just cycled up, they're bench bats. Bench bats. They'll get the odd start here and there. And I think it's going to be the same for Dane Myers. I think it's going to be a really limited opportunity for him. But he's got seven games at least up. And I think the interesting part is Where's he going to play? And the, the really interesting part about Dane Myers is the fact that he was still pitching up until 2021. So he was, I believe, drafted as a two-way guy. So he's always had this kind of profile in. It wasn't just like he finally, firstly picked up a bat for the first time ever in 2021 and became a stud. That isn't the case. But he's picked up a bat. He's found a way. And he's actually improved this year too, which is impressive. He's earned his spot. Like he's been so hot in AAA. He's earned his spot. But Jacob Amaya coming up a few weeks back, he'd earned his promotion and the Marlins basically sat him on the bench. He didn't really get an opportunity, sent back down. And then lo and behold, he goes down to AAA. The next thing is his offensive production completely craters. You know, it's tough going up and down. It's tough. Should be that it gives you a little taste. Whether that helps you as you go back down, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you see things differently. But... I don't see I don't see Dane Myers getting a huge of huge amount of opportunities, but I do see him getting some opportunities in the outfield. I've already mentioned yesterday for those that listened to yesterday's pod, the emergency pod, post gamer. Uh, for me, Jonathan Davis will pretty much be playing every day in center field right now. The the glove is immense, the bat is serviceable. He should be out there. Um, Jesus Sanchez has had a, a cold streak. It's fair to say. So I think there's going to be and, and Jesus Sanchez should never actually face any lefties ever. So right away, if the Marlins are facing a lefty in any of the seven games, then decent chance like Dane Myers is going to be starting in right field. Um, and he may get more time in right field than he does at third base. I believe he sees himself more as a third baseman, feels more natural there, can play first, can play corners, by all accounts, can even play some center. So the versatility is immense. Let's see what the stick can do. It's all gravy for the Marlins at this point. This guy is a minor league. Rule five pick that has only just really started hitting 
if the Marlins can get any kind of at least average league production from this guy, and there's this is there's both power and speed in the profile, and the other thing too, Dane Myers, sex god, he's put together too, Dane Myers. I haven't showed uh, his picture to Tari yet. I won't. Actually, I won't. If he comes on, I'm just going to flick it over to Judge Judy instead. I don't know. But let's see what opportunity gets. Let's wrap it up there, though, guys, because this one um, could go on longer. I feel like I'm I'm in a roll tonight. Maybe it's the adrenaline after a tennis match. But it's late here, quarter past 11 p.m. UK time. Overall, though, I'm delighted for Hoy Soler. He deserves this. I'm delighted he's not going to be playing or hitting in the home run derby. Um, I do wonder how this plays out. But absolutely, there is no option that Hoy Soler is traded by the deadline. The Marlins absolutely need him, and his numbers have shown it. He's immense against lefties. He's immense in high-leverage situations. Jazz Chisholm Jr. to the IL. He's the Marlins' best player. Dane Myers up. We're excited about that, but it is a downgrade, a significant downgrade from Jazz Chisholm Jr. to Dane Myers. He's going to be, in my opinion, taking on a bit of a bench role, and maybe we'll see him in the corner outfield spots, maybe some at third. Wait to see. He's got at least a week um, with the Marlins before the All-Star break, but I think it's going to be maybe one start, maybe two max for Dane Myers. It's going to be fun, though. I'm interested. Cardinals are on deck. They've been putrid this year. There's some clubhouse issues. The manager doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. There's some talent there, particularly on the offensive side. And, you know, who knows? Who knows? I guess the key thing to watch out for during this week or, you know, four games is do they execute a trade in the middle of one of these games? For me, that could be the biggest storyline of this whole series is do the Marlins and Cardinals swing a deal while they're actually playing? It wouldn't It wouldn't shock me. We've already talked about it. I think they are perfect trade partners. They really are. The Cardinals, I think, may wave the white flag this year. And with that being said, they can move some major league pieces and add some arms that are either hurt or big league ready or have some smaller amounts of big league experience that they can use next season. So wait to see on that. But they're a poor team this year. They've been fundamentally sound and they've been a big thorn in the Marlins side for years, it seems. Can the Marlins deliver against a underperforming team? The Marlins went to Boston last week. I was like, oh boy, we never beat the Red Sox, particularly on the road, but we just never beat them at all. Went in, swept them. Seems like we never beat the Cardinals. What can they do? Four-game series. What are the fans going to do? Are they going to show? I think they are. Fireworks on deck. One dollar for kids to get in. It should be an absolute fan fest. It should be crazy scenes. The Marlins, I think they can get it done against the Cards. Guys, thanks for making Lockdown Marlins your first listen of the day. I appreciate you joining me. I'll be back, of course, tomorrow. And the UK go Sean Barrett will be with me as we dig into all of the action and reaction from game one and look ahead to game two. We'll see you then, guys.